catch you driving down the night street fast as I was showing out in front of the girl I like. If I catch you driving down the night street fast, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you that. I'm gonna take care of you. I stayed on the night street and the L street driving. <laughs> but again, it was people like that. And Mr. Ryan didn't only do that on Night Street when he moved away from Night Street to Market Street. He was out there monitoring the road. It was just something that he did. And it's called value transplanting and, and, and protecting your community. And you wonder why people ride down Martin Luther King and they see one side of the Dunbar community and you go two or three streets over Lafayette, St. Charles, da 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 da. It looks just like all the rest of them, Great Boulevard and any other street. Because you got people there who care enough to try to maintain that community and they maintain a set of values both ways and both ways. There's certain things they tolerate and some things they wouldn't tolerate. They do each other and they talk to each other and they kind of do up my yard in your yard. I'm not going to have that junk up on in your yard and you're not going to have it in mine. So it's these kinds of things that we need to do in order to, so children can see them. Children mimic what they see, okay? If you don't do these things early in life, you can end up with some children even in jail. You heard old people say, I'm going to beat you before the police. Or dead. Jail used to be a good place. Jail is a good place to be compared to the graveyard. Because now they're putting you in the graveyard. There was a time you get beat and tomorrow you go back and fight again. But now you don't take a beat anymore, you take a kill. Nothing you can do about it. So I'm saying to you, as parents, as loved ones, as family members, I think we need to take some of this information back and begin to talk about it. It's not secret stuff, it's not super stuff. You just need to think about it. Now, how did I do this? How did we do this in the olden days? What could happen to bring this to the modern days? Because the thing that happened was. Some of us didn't adjust when the changes were made. The lifestyle changes were made. We didn't adjust to them. And we sort of got left back there in the shovel. But if we think about how did we manage back there and how could we manage up here, that's what Steve Lynn and a lot of other social psychologists did. They thought about it. Because we're not, I'm not up here preaching the room, room and doom. And we're not headed to hell on a handbasket. What is happening is we forgot to take what happened in the past and take the good from it and connect it to what's going on in the future and the present. And that's what they began to do, is look at all of these things to kind of begin to compare. That's why we came up with this significant seven. Because they looked and said, all of us got the same kinds of characteristics. We identify with certain kinds of uh, role models certain kinds of perceptions. There are three perceptions we talk about, or three beliefs. A perception and a belief is about the same thing. The first being personal capabilities. I am capable. I can do things. How do you teach capabilities? If you don't know how to teach it, I can tell you how not to teach it. You do, you do not teach it by telling a person they're not capable. They're all about 100 16,000 ways to tell a person that they're capable. Boy, that is great. Boy, don't, don't expect a mountain from a baby, except a mole hill. And put a little dirt on that mole hill, maybe one day it might become a mountain. But you got to start small and build on what you're building on in order for that to work. The next perception or personal uh, uh, belief is one of personal significance. That is, it's guide one's activities by rituals and tradition that develop a sense of meaning and purpose. If you don't have a sense of meaning, then you will never have a real purpose in life. Remember, when people are needed as contributors, they bond together, they invest, they grow, and they get help. You as volunteers, when you give a lot, when you invest in your community, that makes you feel good because you're giving back. You're constantly giving back. You're bonded and that's an investment. 
when everything is done for them, they continue to perceive themselves as inadequate and insignificant. You shouldn't give everything to everybody. They should earn some things. And once they begin to earn, little by little, they feel important. They feel an investment. So remember to make sure that you help that person find some type of personal significance and a belief in themselves. And the other one is one that, a third one, is one called the fostering of influence over one's life. Many of us feel that things just happen to us. I'm a victim of circumstances. And a lot of times when we have a locus of control, everything outside of us control us, we feel real bad about things. We feel that I'm helpless never going to be worth anything. I got a low self-esteem and things just happen to me for no reason at all. But if we have an internal sense of control, a low, they call it a low side LOC, LOC US of control internally, then you feel that things does happen to you. They do happen. But you have something to say about the outcome that you can help foster a better outcome for yourself. You know, you, you, you've heard people say, well, you got me that time, but you sure won't give me no hope. Or, yeah, you got came from the outside, you tricked me this time, but you won't trick me again. And so when we are trying to foster one's influence over their own life, this involves an individual's perception that thoughts, choices, and actions actually affect events and circumstances of his and her life. They feel they have little or no power over what affects them. People with an external low side is one that feel that they are victimized, they're victims of circumstances. But the people with the internal uh, low side, they have the following perceptions. I cannot always control what happens to me. I can influence. A fourth factor, which is, the, the, this is a developmental skill. Now, the other ones, the way you see things and the way you think about things, the next four are going to be actually things that you need to do. <coughs> They're skills, developmental characteristics. And the first one being the skill of intra, I-N-T-R-A, personal skills. Intra, personal skills are the skills of self-assessment, self-control, and self-discipline. Once we master those skills, we are well on our way to managing. Uh, the fourth one, just that helps the child develop a strong skill in handling their inner feelings. You got some people who have little to no intrapersonal skills. You've seen people just walk around out of the road don't even be thinking sometimes. They go right down the road and they see a car coming and, and, and they walk right on across the road like they could care less about the car or anything else. They could care less what come out of their mouth. They don't they don't have no <coughs> of controlling consequences or anything else. So those people don't really sit down and do a good self assessment. They don't think about consequences. If I'm going to walk up here and hit Mr. Green, I'm just going to walk over there and hit Mr. Green. I'm not going to think about the consequences. Well, Mr. Green, you laid me out. And I'm going to why are you hit me, man? Okay, I'm not going to say I went over there and hit him. But I need to think, like, what if I hit Mr. Green and what would he might do to me? Mm -hmm. Amen. Or what if I go break in this person's house and what may happen? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, people don't think about things. They don't do a self-assessment. They don't show self-control. Nor do they show self-discipline, but they want everybody to feel sorry for them. Amen. Why did this happen to me? Mm -hmm. The first thing they want to do is run to your church and tell you all of them. All the you need to ask them some questions. You know, you need to tell them. You go home, like I tell my children sometimes, and go get in front of the mirror. Same way you put makeup on and all this other stuff you put on. 
And when you want to talk to somebody just as smart as you are, talk to you, say that. <laughs> and you can answer too. There's nothing wrong with that. Talk to yourself. Go get in front of that mirror and have a good conversation with whoever you see in it. Amen. Just get in front of that you on the mirror and have a conversation with who you see in that mirror. Mm -hmm. A real conversation. Watch yeah. Now don't stand there and try to fool who you're talking to. Yeah, you know. Okay? Don't try to fool that person. Because that person is looking at you and somebody else is looking at you yeah. too. You may fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And you shouldn't try to fool that one you see in the mirror. Because he might tell you, He's not going to tell you, you fooled at me. He's going to say, okay, okay. Right. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. So you go sometime and you look in the mirror and say, how do my hair look? It's out of place. Yeah. Now, how does that look? How do my makeup look? It's a little bit off you. It's fine. Okay, then you step on out and you go away. Now, why do you believe that? And you don't go up there and you go to talk into it on another level about, now, why should I do this or why should I? You get an answer when you walk right on out and do just the opposite. Mm -hmm. But you believe it when they tell you about pat your hair on this side. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make your makeup go on that side. But some of the other stuff, you don't know, who is that person about? So that's what we need to do when we talk about self assessment, self discipline, and we talk about self control. Those are the three things that we need to have good internal yeah. between you and you yeah. control. I need to be able to get along with me first. Some people can't get along with themselves. That's a sad commentary when you can't get along with yourself. Now, if you can't get along with yourself, how do you expect to get along with Mr. Green? Not as the president of the NAACP or a civil rights fighter. We're going fishing and we're just going to sit on the bank and shoot the breeze. Right. Why can't I get along with him now right. when we're on an equal footing? Right. Because maybe I don't have any good inter, I-N-T-E-R, mm -hmm. personal skills. Those are the skills that we have to get along with other people and in interpret, interact with other people, husbands, wives, children, other family members. You know, like, I can't stand that person there. Here she comes. Uh, it's arrogant. You know all these little cute words you say about them. Uh, uh, they won't let you get a word in by side. Yeah. That person don't negotiate. That person does not listen. That person does not uh, uh, communicate, cooperate, negotiate, share, or empathize. So how can you get along with that person? It's me first, me I'm second, and nobody third. That's a person with very bad interpersonal skills. Man. that they can't get along with nobody, including themselves. So what we need to do is learn the skills of listening. That's number one. You know, a lot of times you've heard somebody say, you just don't listen. Uh, 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 that's a characteristic of Mr. South. He just won't listen. You go try to talk to him, he don't listen to you. Okay, and if I don't hear what you say, how can I negotiate? Man. And when you think you're negotiating with somebody, what is the end result of negotiating? The end result of negotiating is compromise. Amen. When you negotiate something, you don't win and you don't lose. Both of you win. A win-win situation is a compromise. Amen. I got something from it, you got something from it. I didn't get it all, you didn't get it all. We both had a compromise. So Amen. that's a win-win situation is to compromise. But a lot of people think, well, no, uh -huh. it's all or nothing at all. I'm going to go negotiate with them, but I got to have it my way. You might as well not go there because you won't have it your way if you're going to negotiate. You're going to win. That's what you're going to do. You're not playing ball. It's not winners and losers. It's trying to communicate with somebody, to cooperate with somebody, to do something. And that's how people own friendships last because it's a give and take situation. They give a little bit and they take a little bit. That's how come we get along real good on the fish creek. You know me a little bit. We can 
missing people who we do certain things. And that might be different with him if dealing with it on a civil rights issue, because he want to win. And no compromise, no negotiating, no uh -huh. This way and no other way. Man. He want to win. So I'm saying to you, we need to learn to do those things and teach our children to do those things. We teach them to share. That's the other two. The first one is intra, I-N-T-R-A, personal skills. The skill of self-respect, self-discipline, self-assessment. I know me, self-control. If you don't know how to do those things, or you don't teach those things to your young, young ones, you're gonna have problems, okay? The other one is interpersonal skills, is getting along with other people. And if you don't teach those skills, your child is going to have problems getting along with people. And you find our jails, our schools, and some of the other problem areas where we find children who do not have these skills, but they're creating problems. Because I'm first, nobody's second or third. And it starts down here when they're very young. And we need to do the right kinds of things in order to keep that from happening. Another skill is Number six is fostering so strong systemic skills. This six help children to develop a skill which consists of having an understanding of cause and relationships, of cause, relationships, and effect. Along with that comes responsibilities, adaptability, and flexibility. If I'm gonna learn how to get my needs met within a given system, you know, I'm going to work in the box. Sometimes you may have to go outside the box to get your needs met. But it's all done within a system. Systemic skills, systematic skills. That's important that you teach that child. Children need to understand that the system of cause and effect at the core of systemic skills is a sense of responsibility. The third systemic skill is adaptability and flexibility. Barriers sometimes is we can be too strict and too rigid when we don't want to try to teach certain skills to kids. The last skill that I'm going to talk about is that of fostering judgment. Now that's a process in one life. You heard people say from uh, from mistakes come no, mis from mistakes come experience. From experience come wisdom. No, from experience come judgment. From judgment come wisdom. You can say that person got a lot of wisdom, but that person got some experience, they got some judgment, they got some past history to draw upon. You, you make your mistakes and you profit from them. The person who don't profit from their past mistakes got some emotional problems. Yes. Uh, because they go doing the same thing over and over. They go to the mall and steal and see the robot. And they catch him in there, they say, well, I won't go back and see this deal. Then they go and penetrate Well, I won't go back and penetrate this deal. They don't get the message that stealing is the problem, not penance and seals, but stealing. So learn from your past mistakes. That's where wisdom comes in. Maybe stealing is a problem. So how do we look at the judgmental skills? The seven principles help children develop strong judgmental skills and give them the ability to assess a situation with respect to its practical and ethical appropriateness and to make decisions based on that assessment. Judgment requires the application of abstract concepts, stuff that has happened in the past, to real life situations. Thank you.
we will be honoring our life members, Mr. Willie Green, President. Thank you. Mary Waters. Mayor Waters. Life membership chairperson. We're going to take a little chalk for him. We had intended to pin these pins. These are life membership pins. We had intended to pin them on every life member that had became, or every person that had became a life member or subscribed to life member since we last had this event, which would be the future for uh, this past year. But due to the shortage of time and due to some of our people who have had to leave, I'm going to act as the secretary will notify all of those people, she has the record, and they can pick up their live membership pin at the order. Come on, Sister Waters, and the ones who are present can come by and get them. We're not going to pin them on you, but we're going to give them to you. This, uh, these, uh, let me see if I can start, but I, I know one person, because he, uh, she received her life membership paid in full yeah. as, uh, as my boss lady, Mrs. Joseph Green H. Green. <laughs> she not only, come on, man, get your, get your pen. You're not going to pin it on at the earliest convenient and wear well. And the next person that I know is probably <laughs> See, I'm pretty smart, bro, Sap. I know how to keep the pieces. <laughs> I didn't say they all need you up being stupid. <laughs> I know he said. <laughs> and the next person is my, is my pastor, Pastor Benny McClough. And of course, Louise Hick. Louise Hick, come on. Somebody else can ask. Thank you. Board member, Mrs. Louise Hick. Next is, uh, I believe, is Pastor. Uh, Annie Knight. She, yeah, she had to leave, but she, she I'll take a Lots of people had to leave. Uh, but Secretary Denise John. Secretary yes. Denise John. Oh, and Betty yes. Adams. Oh. Adam Craig, 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 Denise Adams. Betty Adams. All Adam. individuals who have, <laughs> who have yeah. did what Brother Sapp said do and put their money okay, in a place. Okay, give me that tonight's song. Let's see that she gets. Okay. She'll take, he'll take Mrs. Sam. Mrs. Sam, that's right, Mrs. Sam. Okay, you want to take your sisters too? Yeah, I'll take them. Mrs. Mrs. Shoemaker too, Mrs. Shoemaker, Mrs. Sam's sister. These are all people who have Sister McLeod. Sister McLeod. Pastor McLeod's wife. Pastor McLeod's sister too, isn't it? Yeah, she's a regular member. She's a regular member. I can't remember. I can't remember. Pastor McLeod, Pastor McLeod be getting them. Who else? Is there anybody else here? I got some more. We're going, we're going to ask that. Like oh, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Green. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Red. Brother, brother, brother Red. Come on, Brother Red. Okay. Right back here, Roy. Roy Kenyon. 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 Roy
that I told you, you we will get them to them. Somebody they can either pick them up at the office or, or and you can arrange to deliver them. We'd like to do it over me. I, I had uh, hoped that we would be able to get off on time, but no matter how hard you try, sometimes things just don't go according to plan. And we apologize to you today for the length of the meeting. Uh, you know, we tried to get out on time, but for whatever reason, it didn't work that way. We're going to uh, recognize one person that I want to recognize for sure as a VIP person is attorney Dan Garber. Oh, yeah. You're a product of New Orleans, by the way, of St. Louis, Missouri, New Orleans, and the Fort Mile. Well, we met some time ago when, when I mean, I was really up against it to find an attorney that had courage enough to sue people in Fort Mile. <laughs> now, see, some attorneys want to be friends with the establishment, and they will just like to right tell you, I just don't want to. This man here will sue anybody, <laughs> any place, <laughs> at any time. He's a really green <laughs> And let me tell you something about him. He knows that I'm, I, he knows that I will not let anything deter me from going to church. He will arrange to see me after church on Sunday. <laughs> I'll meet him after church on Sunday. So we got to get on this on a Monday morning. And he said, Sunday evening at 4 o'clock. I know you I know you talked about earlier than that, but, but Sunday evening at 4 o'clock, come to my office and we're in the office. And we, we have helped many of people through his expertise. I tell him also many times that if it weren't for him, I don't know what I would do. He said, well, somebody was doing it before me. I said, not as well as you do. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Folks is financial too. You know, some attorney just get your money and go to their bank. He he returns some of the money to our bank. He, he supports our activities financially. We appreciate it. And for anybody else, if I miss you, charge it to my head, not to my heart. I love you. I I, I beg that you will continue to support. I can't say enough about Pastor McLeod. He is, he is always there. He puts his time, his money, his expertise. He do all the things that he could possibly do if he was the president. You would, be, you would, you would honestly think that he's the president. He has me sometime getting up early because he's ready to do some civil rights work. I thank God for him, and I thank God for each of you. And I just pray that you will continue to keep up the good work. That we can. Oh, I don't know that I'll be back with you next year this time. Oh, yeah. But I, but the, but the, the, the jury is still out, and I'll do whatever the Lord said to do. Thank you very much. Dismiss us from this place. 
but not from thy presence. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ abide with us now and forever. May we all say amen. 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 And the business that you, that I can't take care of today. Stop by the office or call the office after 9.30 tomorrow, I'll be there. Now I got a face with a name. She was a